Hi, another quick update on the uh, GPS server I've uh, made. I'm calling it ARGS, A-R-G-S, which stands for Amateur Radio GPS Server. It's a little device with a little 2.4 inch screen. You can see my hand here. Um, it takes uh, from 5 to 30 volts. So it work, can work on battery. Um, show you the inside of it. A little slip together case that I've um, 3D printed for it. Okay, get it back in there. And it's just a fixed, it's a bit hard to do things with one hand. <laughs> and it's just a fixed by three screws there on the end. Okay. So what does it show us? Sorry, a bit shaky here with the um, holding a phone camera. It shows us a clock. So it gives us the time. It gives us the time. This is my local time here. And it shows us UTC time down here. And then it gives me the grid reference that the satellites have locked to. This is a uh, azimuth chart for the satellites so uh, with a little blinking going on here is the data coming from the uh, GPS receiver and it shows us a latitude, a longitude and our height what you might not be able to see down there because of my horrible camera is um, at the bottom line here it shows me um, the IP address that it is currently uh, connected or currently serving to depending on what mode it's in gives me an uptime here so we can see how long it's been up and it shows us a voltage over here so we know what voltage is coming in through the power lead so sort of like a voltmeter um, and over here is just um, a version number of the software so what can it do well what it does and why I developed it is because I um, enjoy FT8 digital mode but one of the key things about FT8 is your timing must be correct now for in our area occasionally we get um, internet outages uh, and my PC unfortunately doesn't keep, keep very good time um, and we have things like um, you, can, you can use tools like BK Time Sync which I do use here but um, that's okay when my internet's connected but when my internet goes down um, I get my time from ARGS and how I do that is ARGS has a time server built into it so I go over here date and time dialogue pops up I go to internet time change settings and I click update now um, and that's just managed to get the time from ARGS using the internet time protocol this little GPS server so it's really handy for that and that was the main reason why I developed it it has a web browser interface uh, which we just hit F5 here hold on sorry get organized oh, we'll go back to the main the home page Oops. Back to the home page. Right. Okay, so this is the home page. Gives us basically um, the same information. We've got, you know, the date and the time. This is only updated every uh, uh, 60 seconds or something. Anyway, it gives us our grid reference. A bit more information here about what network we're connected to and so forth, MAC addresses. It has a settings screen where we can go and change the, uh, the we can trim the voltage because you might have a, a voltage drop on the cable getting to here you're measuring it at your power supply you measure the voltage at your power supply or your battery um, and it will take into account it's where you can enter the voltage drop there um, you can also change the screen colors the background the border the chart the time colors for UTC and local 
and the text and the GPS. So those colors that you see there are all set up here. And if we change the color, say if we wanted to change the border color to whatever, I don't know, a, um, maybe a green, a green border color and go OK. So we've got green set there. Now if we go down here to the very bottom of the page and go save. When this starts up, we've got a green border. Okay, very simple stuff. All right, and now we're back to our home screen. Uh, we have a settings, back onto the settings page. We've got a few things, a few more things. We can flip the, the display. We can flip it so that it's around the other way. Um, we have refresh rate for the chart. Now this will keep drawing satellites on the chart. And what you end up with is little lines coming around each satellite as the Earth turns, I guess it is. As the old position change and the, the satellite changes. Well, eventually it completely fills up. You know, after about an hour you've got all these lines around here. So I found it, you know, sometimes I wanted to see that, sometimes I didn't. So I put on a refresh rate here so we can say once every 20 minutes this, the complete thing, everything will be erased and it will be redrawn correctly. Okay, now the Wi-Fi enabled I've been having problems with. Um, what I wanted to do was disable the Wi-Fi on this so that if I'm in a situation where all I wanted was time and I don't want to pollute the airways with 2.4 gig Wi-Fi or I'm running on battery and I don't want the current from the battery, the additional current from the battery. Um, I wanted to be able to turn off Wi-Fi. Well, it, it turns it off, but the problem is I can't turn it back on because I've got no reset button on the back of the ARGs. So that's something I have to to figure out. I need to put a reset button on the back of there so that when you reset it, um, you can get back into this screen because, of course, the settings screen is via Wi-Fi. Okay, so what else have we got there? We've got our time server settings, so we can turn the time server off on the ARGs, off or offer on. Why you want to do that I'm not quite sure because one of its main features is the time server but it's there. Um, we've got the port that it, uh, NTP port which is the time server port which the standard is 123 but you could set another port. Um, we have this NTP, GPS NTP offset. Now this is a microsecond offset so this is basically when our X gets a signal or the GPS time how long it takes to internally process and send it out the Wi-Fi to the computer. Okay, so that's that time. And it's basically the processing time, if you like. So you can adjust that to, to make uh, it absolutely perfectly with the GPS time and the internet time. Then you have your local time zone with an offset. I'm in New Zealand, so we're 12 hours ahead. Um, and yes, we're in daylight saving at the moment. So you, you collect that to enable it, to take it off to disable it. Um, now, it supports both client and access point. So when it, the idea was, when you first get it, it sets up as an access point. On your computer up here, where your Wi-Fi settings are, ARGs will appear here when, it, when you first set it up. You then connect to ARGs. At the moment, see I'm connected to my local 8 McLean uh, network, but if I was setting up ARGs initially, I would connect to ARGs, right? And then I would have to go in here and put in its local address, which is different to what the address is now. At the moment, what I've done is ARGs is connected to my 8 McLean network, okay? Um, and the timeout for it, so like it when it starts up, it wants to it will give it one minute before it actually times out trying to connect to my local network. There must be something wrong, and then it will start up its own network that you need to connect to. Um, and the settings you can uh, after it's when it starts up, it it's got a uh, uh, it hunts for what client networks are available or what networks it can connect to are available and here we have two that are available in my vicinity my 8 McLean and also another one which is mine as well okay and if you click on one of these 
you can see how it changed the name here. The password you need to enter yourself. Um, and whether it should use DHCP. Uh, in other words, does it get its internet address from the network or are you going to have a fixed IP address? If you, if you click, if you tick, untick that, this will be the IP address that it will have when it connects to the network. Ticking it and it will use the network to decide on what IP address. Uh, these are the access point settings. Um, it can have pretty standard stuff. This is its name, when it, well, what it shows up with here. We'll shut with args because that's the name we've got in here. This is the password, um, the IP address it will be in, the gateway, the subnet, whether it's a hidden network or not. How many clients can be connected to it at one time? It supports up to eight clients maximum. What RF channel it will be on and what power. And then once you've saved or you, once you're ready to go, you click save settings. Um, one other feature that I think is worth pointing or showing is in the maintenance screen um, we have the ability to update the firmware online so if we go over here I'll try and find where I've put my firmware uh, SP8266 uh, GPS display latest uh, no firmware there, we'll have to go into an older one, no firmware there, damn. Okay, so we'll quickly create some firmware. We go to sketch, we go to export compile binary. It will build, it's uh, Arduino based. So what we're doing is we're building the software and we're going to output a file, which I'm then going to import into args which is the firmware, which is how it runs. And then, so the great thing about this is the firmware updates are released um, by anybody. I think I'm going to um, make this public domain, this product. Um, but I haven't decided quite on that yet. Um, okay. Still building the firmware. Anyway. Once the firm, oh here we are, we can see that it's been built and we'll have, we'll have a file here which will be, oh there, there it is there, args bin. So we go to our web browser, we point to args bin, we go open, we go over to args and we click the update button. And on args, boom, the firmware is updating. It's got it across Wi-Fi, it's going to reboot any second. And there we are, it's rebooted. And as you can see, it, it, by default, it goes straight into access point mode. And the IP address is 192.168.4.12. Just the startup screen starts up and lets us know that. And then it, it runs away and finds its finds the, uh, the lock on the satellites, which you can see was pretty quick when it started up there. And then there's our time clock. So we'll show you how you connect to it when it first starts up like that. So you go up here and we can see args is here now. So we're going to connect to it. Right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our browser. I've got the uh, the address that I had entered that in before. Put that address in. And no, that's the wrong address, sorry. We want the four. Ah, uh, so I have to get a keyboard here, sorry, I'm trying to hold things and do things, and so it's 4.12, and there we are, there's the, uh, the setup screen, so now I can go into settings, and I can go, we can go down here, And we can go refresh, and it's found our networks. So we will connect to 8McLean again because that's what that password's for. And we'll go down here and we'll go save. And now, once ARGS restarts, it's restarted, it's pretty quick. Um, 
we can see up here that my computer's automatically disconnected from that ARGS network and now it's connecting to my normal Lake McLean network. Okay, and now if we go back to our browser, we will need to go back to 1.24. Enter and we're back on. So now ARGS is connected to my router so all of my devices can now see it and can have it their time set up from it. All right well that's uh, a short 15 minute video on ARGS and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, ZL1 CVD signing off and um, we'll see you later.